Hello everyone, my name is Alicia Jackson, Licensed Professional Counselor, and welcome to my channel. Today we are reviewing Married at First Sight, Season 17, Episode 10. Here at this channel we do a different type of therapeutic review where we get a little curious about what could be happening potentially inside of these couples. And my goodness, there's a lot happening inside these couples, especially this episode. So... If you are returning, of course, welcome back. Be sure to like the video and, of course, subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get started. First, we have Becca and Austin. And Becca and Austin, you know, they're they're still in this, like, really playful, cute stage. And we are seeing, we are seeing that there's a part of Becca that is getting a little restless around this physical intimacy piece. And so she's using innuendos. Uh, I guess the way to score in this game is pegging and she is enjoying using this word to maybe like push Austin in her direction and Austin is um, he is standing firm he's standing firm in his decision to take things slow and I'm wondering how this is going to to play out in their relationship with this part of Becca that is concerned, right? So, um, Becca stated that, you know, she is kind of getting in a space where she's lost, um, really, like, lost any other direction to go to build a, that physical connection without feeling like they're friends. And so, um, I'm wondering, right, I'm wondering, too, for Becca, like, if she took a moment, instead of trying to push Austin in her direction the way she wants him to go like sitting with herself with this part of her that is restless like oh what does she fear will happen if right if it takes longer than she expects what does she fear or believe will happen because that's what's driving this that fear is what's driving this um this behavior right to push him and also for austin as well um there are different people different people have different um, histories with physical touch and we've talked about that and named that some right and also too there's a reason why there's a there's a very important reason why uh, for him he needs other types of connection first before being physically intimate with someone and so I don't know if Austin is comfortable with saying that but it seems like maybe there's some criteria he's looking for and Becca that he's not seeing yet. Like he's still looking for some check marks before he just jumps in. He's like, hey, we have fun. We enjoy each other. We are um, like the same, right? We we really get along. And I want to see if there's some other spaces that he's looking for, right? That to check off before making that decision to jump in in the physical realm of intimacy. That's what I'm sensing. Who knows? But just the, some of the verbiage he uses a little bit. He always says, I have to work out some things. There's some things I need to work out. I always want to say, after he says that, what are those things? <laughs> what are those things that you're working out? Tell me more about your process of working this out. I want to know more, right? But he is very tight-lipped around that. Uh, and I'm wondering, of course, if it's for the camera's sake or if that's just who Austin is. Uh, but things are moving slow. And so later on during the potluck, after they have this very tense conversation with Lauren and Orion, uh, and even with Claire and Cameron, um, Becca emphasizes, you know, really empathizes with them, right? She's like, oh, this is a lot. And Austin stated that he is very, he was very stressed during that exchange between them two. And understand that conflict can be awkward um, and can bring up stuff within us. Our relationship with conflict can tell us a lot about our, our experiences, our beliefs. Um, you know, oftentimes people feel like, Ooh, if we have conflict, does that mean it's it? It's over, right? Um, what, what's going to happen if they've experienced this in the past? That's usually what our, our mind, our body tries to tell us is going to happen in conflict. Like, Oh, this is, this is it. Right. And, um, at the same time, I'm wondering too, it's really showing up in their relationship where he does have a part of him that's like, I just want to lean in, really get to know Becca before we jump into the nitty gritty, those things that could tear us apart, he says, right? So there's a part of him that's worried about the other side of the conflict. And it's really only when you, you're in the conflict 
and you work and build and have a tested relationship, a tested connection, that you really know the strength of it. You can you can get to know each other for for you forever, right? But it's not until you get some conflict, you work through some things that you really start to come together and have a tested, firm uh, foundation in a relationship. And so, we'll see, we'll see. But it does feel like Becca um, is getting a little uh, weary, and Austin is very concerned, concerned about conflict, concerned about their relationship. And wants to keep things just nice. Let's just keep it safe, right? Just keep it safe. Austin also shared with the group that he, that they have, you know, the different uh, religions uh, as an issue and also his slower intimacy speed. And he's still working through some things, right? Trying to figure some things out. Um, And Becca got a little emotional, you know, knowing that everyone's struggling. You know, she's like, I know how hard this is. It's hard for me, and it, it hurts me to see you all going through through this. And I wanted to even get curious about that. Um, it's okay, right? It's okay to have um, an emotional response, right? Uh, and also just for her to get to know more about, about what was happening for her in that moment. Because this is a very distressing very distressing situation that they're in and they're like leaning on to each other for comfort there's so much happening here uh, with these couples and there's a lot of like really touchy spaces with pretty much all of them right um there's definitely a part of becca that's wondering like hey what's what's happening here what's really going on right and it seems like austin is like we're just holding out and we'll just keep biding time like we'll just keep right here coasting and I feel like that's going to start to really uh clash um overall I feel like it's really going to start to clash like Becca's trying I see this part of her trying to like okay bring bring the bring the uh reins in a little bit and it's like the the horse gets away from her and then it's a part of her that comes back and then a part of her that wants you know things to move forward like so she's constantly doing this like tug of war internally and that's a lot of stress and that's exhausting internally right so that's why you know if she is wanting to respect his speed for her to sit with herself about that can help also resolve that tug of war inside of her instead of trying to push austin uh, in the way that she wants him to go. But they meet with Dr. Pia, right? They meet with Dr. Pia and she's excited to see their genuine connection. You know, it's not forced. It's they're just sitting there, they're giggling. They're close, sitting close to each other. They're constantly sitting close to each other. They're always touching each other, whether it's like a their legs, you know, touching each other or uh, hand around each other. Um, kissing, pecking, they're always connecting. And so Dr. Pia asks, you know, how's the intimacy going? And she's like, yeah, well, I I like hanging out with them. But, you know, he goes at a slower pace than I do. And he said, you know, he really just wants to make sure there's more of an emotional connection before jumping into things and just, um, you know, having just, just the physical intimacy and nothing else. And Dr. Pia said, well, hey, it actually looks like right now there's more than that. Uh, and he said, yeah, yeah. And I I still, you know, just need some more time to work through some things. What, what are these things? I wanted Dr. P is so bad to say, tell me about these things. And she's usually really, really good with the the questions. Right. And so I was like, come on, Dr. P. Um, but he didn't, he didn't say it. She didn't ask. And Dr. P asked Becca if she expressed her needs to Austin and she said, mm, "I think so. Well, like I'm, I'm attracted, I'm attracted to him, and I would like to move things forward." And Dr. Pia asked him what it was like to hear Becca talk about him in this way, and he said, "Well, he, he is too, and he still wants to take things slow." And so then Dr. Pia talked about um, if they had anything that would be open to trying, right? Um, and Austin says that he feels like things will happen in the moment, right? So it doesn't have to be. Um, the home run, right? That you can you can sit at the first base, second base, third base, right? And so she's seeing if maybe there's some potential in that direction. And at the same time, Austin is pretty vague uh, around that. And Dr. Pia encouraged him to talk about physical intimacy and and their 
touch history, which is something that I've uh, named in previous reviews. I feel like it's just so important. I know, and I saw the little boy <laughs> inside of Austin that got really uncomfortable. He was like, uh, well, you know, you know, in the moment, more in the moment. And oftentimes that is like a misconception that I hear a lot where they're wanting things to be spontaneous and happen in the moment. Like they do, like we see it in the movies all the time, right? Like all of a sudden we just make eye contact and then ta-da, you know, that's not always the case. And having conversations, especially getting to know each other about physical touch can be very helpful. And also, like Dr. Pia said, can also be a form of foreplay for them. And they can make it fun. You can do like, oh, what are my red lights? What are my green lights? What are my yellow lights? Right, things I might do. Um, put some dice, right, and, and play some games. It can be creative. It can be fun. It doesn't have to be where they are right now which is like kind of like she's remember she's like kind of eh, eh, right and he's like no right so it's ah it's really um like a, a place of that's causing a more tension and anxiety around it and the more that that happens the more that there's going to be friction and um the more that there's going to be resistance as well well austin jokingly said that he doesn't want to turn on becca you know on anymore and you know becca's like well that's just me and he said you know he wants her to own her you know her sexuality he wants her to own all of that and at the same time like and be her right and if there are any things that he you know has some issues with he'll talk about it dr p encouraged him she encouraged him to have more conversations around physical intimacy and austin looked very frightened so we shall see how, how this goes. I I feel like this is going to start to be a sticky space uh, for them. I'm just reading both his body language and reading Becca's body language. It seems like there's some things internally that are happening that she's like trying to really keep the top on the pot. And he's in a space where he's just staying, staying firm, right? He's staying firm. And I would love to know more about that and we shall see next we have lauren and orion and whew, this episode okay here we go so they are at the potluck right they have the potluck dinner with the couples and lauren comes in first everybody's very impressed with her charcuterie board and um orion comes in shortly after with his cheesecakes and um they're giving an update right they're giving an update on how they're doing as a couple and my goodness, you know, because things are still fresh, right? Because things are still very fresh, and I'm talking about the wound for both of them, right? That all we see in this scene is just protection. All we see, like they're still protecting themselves in this moment. And, and understandably, right? Understandably, it's still very fresh. The person who caused the harm is here. And, and they're still trying to stand 10 toes down on the reason why they caused the harm, right? And so it can ignite, right? It ignites our protectors to jump in uh, fast and, and furious, uh, but fast to make sure that we're not hurt again, that, that it's not going to happen, right? They, they say it, not on my watch. <laughs> uh, that's really like their, their mantra, never again right and so lauren responded to brennan uh when he said that you know even though him and emily are still having issues that he's he's still in it and so lauren says you know with everything that you guys are going through it's very commendable that you are sticking through with it actually you know what it's very commendable and i said okay lauren there's this part that's coming in for Lauren that is ah it's there is it's giving some some digs some jabs right it's it's being passive aggressive right in this moment right if we want to classify the behavior like the impact of the behavior is like passive aggressive right and the and so that's what's happening in this moment right and she said yeah because it's easy to just leave when stuff gets hard i said okay all right, Lauren, I hear you. 
she's like, because that's what you did, Orion. You left when things got hard, right? So there's a part of her that is still very upset and hurt that he left, that he called it quits in her in her mind, right? In her mind's eye too soon. Orion in his mind's eye, he did what he did what he felt was right for him, right? And so Orion said, well, hey, yeah, we haven't told you all, but Lauren and I, I decided to get a divorce. And Lauren said, I, not Lauren and I. And so then Emily asked when it happened. And um, Lauren said, well, maybe you can tell it because, you know, it happened so many times. Um, so Lauren is, her protection here is definitely um it's it's showing up as anger right it has anger and rightfully so right so it is showing up in this way and of course that anger we know is a space that activates orion because right this is past um history right conflict and escalation of voice things like that ignite orion's protectors and when orion is not safe what does he do he defends himself by being untruthful oftentimes or tell a version of a truth that's not the whole truth like that's how he shows up almost like a you know um a younger a younger one that maybe when he's in trouble with mom or dad like doesn't doesn't tell the truth in a moment to avoid getting in trouble right um that's what i'm sensing right is happening but but who knows who knows right and so it's it continues it continues to happen so all right it's like yeah after the honeymoon we took our time away and you know i kind of decided that that was what i need to do and then i really really decided after our session with dr pia that's when i was like it's really clear that we need to to get a divorce and brennan asked lauren well hey did you feel like orion gave it a chance she said no no um she said i made a joke and she said a horrible joke right on the second day of her honeymoon and she said i was called a failure and that i failed the marriage she said that i was slut shamed um for being physically intimate with someone else two months before uh, we got married and and she, then she keeps going on right like and you never apologized uh for for your behavior and you only cried about feeling bad that you made me feel bad right so did she answer the question she answered Brennan's question saying no and and so that that would have sufficed and at the same time there's a part of her that's still like Orion's here and he needs to hear where I'm at and that's oftentimes so true we have a part of us when we're hurt we want the person to know exactly what they did and how and how it made us feel. We want to, we have a part of us that wants to tell the story, like, look what you did, right? Um, and it, and oftentimes that is a lot to hear, and it's a lot to take in, um, and, and at the same time, that's where they are, right? That's where they are, that's where Lauren is, and he said, you know, actually that day I did, you know, I did apologize, and she said, no, you didn't, you did not apologize for calling me a failure, or for saying that I didn't have your back. And and so don't just sit there unless you meant those words. And if you really meant those words, then they, that hurts even more if you did. And she said, when all I was doing was reassuring you that you didn't fail the marriage. So there's this part of her that was fighting. That's what I'm sensing. The part of her that is fighting for this marriage, the part of her that has fought, that's done the work to stay in it, is very upset with him because he quit right and and those feelings are very valid right and she's wanting orion to hear her and have space for her and at the same time orion is limited right now like he's limited i feel like in the area of one there's a part of me that feels like orion does want to appear a certain way um and so doing this in front of the group i feel like it's gonna bring his his soldiers his protection to come up and also the fact too that again her voice is escalated and anger is something that he has spoken to that is something that right um really activates him 
into defense mode. And he said, well, I don't feel like you failed. And Lauren said, well, why did you say that? Right? So she's wanting an answer. Well, why did you say that? Okay. And just part of her that is why? Why did you say that when I didn't, I didn't fail the marriage? This is difficult. This is difficult because there's harm on both ends, right? There's harm on both ends. And again, Orion is limited. What these parts of Lauren are seeking right now in this moment, which is validation, vindication, um, explanation, <laughs> that these 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 things aren't going to happen from from Orion, not in this moment. Maybe later down the road when he's had some time to process some things, maybe talk to some people, get some clarity. But right now in this moment, it feels like, oh, Lauren, I, there's a part of me that's like, this isn't. I understand why this is happening, right? I understand why she's wanting this to happen and even to have this audience so people can see, right? People can see and know that she has done everything and what he has done to her, right? There's all of this is here. I'm not saying that it's the best way or the right way. I'm just saying this is where she is, okay? And and even though she wants that validation, which she needs it, right? The vindication, the explanation, Sitting with herself again, like similarly, like I said with Becca, um, when we were talking about her before, wanting Lauren to sit with herself and validating herself, right? And it, and it's okay. It's okay to to still have a part of you that wants the other person to 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 own up to what they did, right? Um, and to be upset if they don't, right? That's okay. Uh, and at the same time, to for her to sit, spend some time and take care with herself. Right. But it's so fresh. Right. It's so fresh. And, you know, the show must go on in Mass World that this is like it's going to make collides and clashes like this happen. And so Lauren said, well, why did you say that then? And I don't believe that Orion knows the answer to that question. That question is very that's that's a huge question. Right. I feel like that's the language that Orion has, because if you make a mistake, you fail. Right. And that, and that's similar. A lot of a lot of us get that message. You make one mistake, you failed. Right. And that's how he felt. Right. When he made that comment about learning about her history before their their marriage, he made that comment. Right. About how he showed up in that situation. I feel like that's the language he has. And he has to get curious about who gave him that language. How did he learn to know that if you make one mistake, you fail something? Right. I don't think he knows the answer to that question. And so then he says, well, I'm not I'm not changing what I said, defending himself. Right. This is when he starts to pull back and like try to he sees Lauren's upset. So he's trying to reel it in like, oh, did I say something? Oh, no. No, I didn't say anything. I'm right. And then we see Lauren. Right. Like she's her anger is like coming to a place where it's like like resolved like she's resolved to be here right um as soon as he says that it's like almost like her her anger in a way that part of her is validated by him saying i i'm not changing what i'm saying because it just validates the reason why she's upset and so she's like you're a gaslighter she actually said, you're a gaslighter, bruh. And I said, oh, man. So this is when she, right, you're no longer my husband. You're just a man who I met two weeks ago, right? Remember she said that? It was like a few episodes ago. Like, that's that's where this is now. Lauren said that she's not going to sit there and let him lie because it's the truth. And she said, I have held my account, myself accountable through this whole process through this entire process and if you're not going to hold yourself accountable I'll do it in this moment there was definitely a, pro a part of me right that was that was happy for Lauren to have her say like she spoke for her experience of Ryan throughout this marriage right because oftentimes what I have seen is where it can be really difficult and challenging for the person to speak for their experience right and hold the person accountable and i'm i'm there's a part of me that's really grateful that lauren had the space to do that um you know was it the best way to do it or the best way to go about navigating this conversation absolutely not 
uh, at the same time, grateful that she was able to at least say, hey, like you didn't show up for me and you haven't been honest. And if you're not going to hold yourself accountable, I'll do it. I'll keep you honest. Right. So she has this part of her that is like fighting for the honesty. Even we see this in the after party where she is telling other people's tea. Right. Uh, because she's just like, we need to be honest about what's happening. Right. We need to be honest. And this part of her is right. I do. It is right. It has some validity. It sees that, hey, if we when we do not tell the truth, then harm happens. Harm happens. And so this part of her is showing up in this moment to say, hey, we're going to say the things. We're going to say them. Orion said that the only thing that I came to a conclusion on is that the feelings that I had for her at the beginning are no longer here. And I didn't want to be in a marriage and not feel in it. Right. So that was the reason why I chose to have a divorce or get a divorce. Um, you know, I really want Orion to, to really explore that. I really do. Um, and not to say that, again, he's wrong for wanting the divorce. I just feel like there's more for Orion to learn there. Right. More for Orion to learn about why he chose to get a divorce. I don't know for sure if he knows why um, exactly if it's if it is right the joke the joke that she made in a very bad taste right or if there's more he did say in name that they do like every time they have a conflict that it gets worse and worse and that they go from having you know small conversation to escalating into big um, you know, big back and forth moments like they are doing right now. And the reason why that happens is because there's the hurt is there. And so the hurt is always going to um, the space that you need in order to hear someone else. The hurt and protection is always going to land in the middle of that space. If the hurt hasn't been resolved, the hurt hasn't been acknowledged then that hurt and protection is always going to get in the way of you hearing each other. And that's what's happening with Orion and Lauren. Because even at the end of them having this moment about communication and, and Lauren's like, well, we don't communicate. And I'm like, well, no, you're, you're talking at each other. And instead of like really doing reflective listening and hearing each other. And so Lauren ends, right? She, she said that she has mixed emotions, mixed emotions, hearing about the other couples, um, and their ups and downs because they're sticking with it, right? Um, she says she it does give her some comfort, and at the same time, she doesn't like the fact that they're struggling, right? And she wishes that they weren't going through this. And she said that she has to reassure herself that she did her best, and then she starts to to really get emotional and, and tearful. Um, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that she can hear that and take that in as much as she can. That she has done everything that she could do. And I don't know if continuing to have um, moments with Lauren and Orion in this in this way is is effective, right? I feel like if harm happens like this in a relationship on Married at First Sight, then every single time that they have interaction, there needs to be someone uh, expert present, preferably. A, a licensed one <laughs> present to really help them navigate the, the communication, right? And navigate, if, even if, right, to, if they continue to decide to have and, and tape and be with each other, then at least having individual sessions with, with the expert to really get some more clarity about what's happening internally for them. Because I there's a part of me that's concerned that they're not getting any support while they're going through this and they're still being activated and triggered when they see each other, right? And so, ooh, wouldn't it be nice, right? Wouldn't it be nice if they had some support from the experts while they're going through this and really getting more clarity about it? Because I feel like Lauren needs some, Orion needs some, and it could be really beneficial. But we'll see how it goes because we see in some episodes down the road that maybe it's not over for them yet. I I do have concerns, you know, about the whiplash that keeps happening in this relationship. Um, Orion definitely has some uncertainty, right? He is definitely torn. Part of him is like, we got to get out of here. Part of him is like, I have 
really fond feelings, right? I, I did develop genuine feelings for Lauren, right? And so that's where this wishy-washiness is happening. Wouldn't this be great for Orion to get some support in that? Um, but we shall see. Next, we have Brennan and Emily. Oh, dear. Okay. So, things start out pretty good, right? Um, Brennan's making breakfast, and Emily, there's a part of her that's, like, it feels, like, really concerned and almost, like, nervous, right? Um, so, she's, like, really apologizing for her friends. He said he didn't take it personally. Like, he understands uh, that they are protective of her, and he's also seen that he could have handled it differently, even though he was trying to defend their relationship and himself, like there was a better way that he could have handled it. And Emily said that she's always going to have his back and support him, and um, she didn't tell her friends to say any of that, right? So there's a part that's coming in to like cool, cool the, the lakes, right, or cool the waters, it seems like, like, hey, hey, hey. It, you know, I, I didn't, you know, everything's fine, right? And so I'm wondering about this one, right? This part of her that is here. Because um, you see it in her facial expression. She's like looking down, to, like looking down, like, you know, like, is everything okay? Like, I'm hoping, you know, I didn't, I didn't tell them, right? It's like um, getting, wants to make it clear, like, hey, I didn't tell my friends to do that, right? And I didn't tell them to say that. Emily said it also like, I, I know my friends are a reflection of me and I just don't want you to, to take that, right? Like it's, it's something again, me. And he said, well, I don't take it personally. I don't hold it against you. Um, it's not your fault. And Emily has such a look of relief right on her face. Um, it is, it's there, there right now. It feels like they're playing nice. Like kind of like how they did on the honeymoon, right? Um, and doing activities together, right? So Emily said they had a day together and it went well and Brennan went to work out with her. He enjoyed himself. Now at the potluck, they give like a pretty short uh, update on their relationship, but a very like, you know, kind of a thud, right? Of an update that Brennan says that he does not have a romantic bond or relationship with Emily yet and something they're working through and then that's when Lauren you know steps in for her moment and um also during the couple update it was with Cameron and Claire um Cameron was saying some affirming things about Claire and Brandon was like oh man you're gonna make me cry and I haven't cried since the second grade and I'm like hmm okay want to get curious about that like <laughs> just those little nuggets help us right um not to say that it's a negative thing to not to not cry or to cry just something to get curious about your relationship, right? His relationship with his emotions, because that is definitely like a big, huge topic this this episode. Um, and then we see too, though, that Emily, you know, she got tearful, like pretty tearful at the end when they do the group hug and like how, you know, they're struggling. And you can see that it is a challenge for her. And she even um, names that later on. And so this happens, right? With her conversation with Becca, they're kind of debriefing uh, the potluck extravaganza and she said that you know she feels like Brennan is closed off right uh, Be Becca said well just because you know he doesn't find you attractive you know that doesn't mean that you aren't attractive right and Emily actually didn't really answer that question fully right she's like well you know it's hard like it's hard and it's this situation is showing me that I'm stronger than I realize that's a part of her that is really like I don't know taking this in it's like it, am I is it me right is it me am I attractive I feel like that she was very slow to say yes I I know that I'm still attractive like I know and I love me I I know who I am and that was that was not on the ready right what came on the ready is this is a lot for me to deal with right and it is Rightfully so. And so she says she's learning about herself. She's also saying, too, that this was a reason why she was so slow to get in a relationship because she wanted someone who she was going to be in a relationship with to really mean it, like mean it and want to stay and really be committed and loyal to the relationship. And so this is kind of activating that. And I'm wondering 
to who why why that is like what is what is Emily seen in relationships what is what has Emily's relationships been like um you know even with her short stints that she's had um or partying whatever what has she learned what information has she taken in about men is this a way to protect herself right from maybe um being um cheated on or like you know infidelity what right there's a reason why we do everything and protection is usually the culprit right and because we are wired for protection our brain is wired for it right and so she's like hey i'm not going to be in a relationship because you know these men they don't know what they want and i'm going to do me right and then she's like all right so i'm going to do i'm going to jump into a relationship on married at first sight because i know for sure that they're signing up for marriage that's what they're signing up for right it's a way to protect herself from from potentially getting hurt right in a relationship and then here she is getting hurt in a relationship and it's like she's she's not doing well right she's not okay which makes sense it's a lot to deal with uh, for emily again being her first relationship and also to having a situation where you're in a relationship with someone who is not attracted to you okay and for some reason brennan does not feel safe enough to say the reasons um even in the session with dr pia Emily said, hey, she feels like they put everything behind them. And I said, oh, really? Where did it Where did it go? Because it's still very much here in your relationship. Just yesterday at the potluck, Brennan said that you both don't, like he doesn't have any romantic feelings, right? So it is still very much here. I feel like that there's a part of Emily that's saying like, oh, that's behind us and we can just keep moving forward. And it's not like, oh, that's with you. Like, that is still ever much with you. Um, you maybe have put it behind you, but Brennan is still carrying it very much so with him, right? And um, so that is an untruth, I feel. Uh, and Brennan said that, you know, he's never done therapy. And um, he wonders what Dr. Pia's intentions are. And I feel like this part shows up a lot in their session with Dr. Pia, right? Because um, since he's never been into therapy, there's a part of him that I feel like potentially feels like being in therapy means something negative about you, whether like, oh, you have something to work on, which just actually just means you're human, or oh, you, you're, you're having some challenges, which also just means you're human. And at the same time, there have been judgments, especially... Um, and when it comes to gender and men and like a lot of cultural norms and burdens around men and their emotions and feelings and therapy, all the things, right? And it feels like potentially that's what's happening here. And this is the, I wonder what her intentions are. And Emily said, oh, you should ask her, right? And, oh, I wish. I wish Brennan would have done that. I wish Brennan would have said, hey, Dr. Pia, tell me what your intentions are for for today, right? Because I feel like potentially a part of him thought Dr. Pia is trying to make me, make me be in this, make me have feelings for you or make me um, stay committed to this relationship when I don't want to. Like, I feel like that's like, and, and I don't know, I mean, it doesn't feel like necessarily that's what Dr. Pia was trying to do. She was trying to understand him. Right. But that's that's what he it, it felt like some of that was there, you know, in the background somewhere. Right. And so Dr. Pia asked about the rockiness and the things that she's coming in. Right. Are they on track? And and Emily said, well, uh, you know, it's 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 subsided. And she said, so it's completely over. And she said, well, no, I mean, um, you know, it's not great to hear. Right. It's not great to hear that he doesn't have romantic feelings and that, um, you know, she is feeling disconnected from Brennan. And even though, right, she now knows that, it's still um, a bit challenging because he's not sharing, right? She wants to hear more feelings, more emotions, really understand what he's going through. And I feel like we're using the wrong, they were using the wrong words <laughs> in the session because she's like, I just want to know his feelings, what he's feeling, what he's feeling. And so for Brennan, he's like, I don't have feelings for you, right? And so that the meaning of feeling was not the same. Really, Emily wants to know why, why are you distant? 
what's happened what are what is what are the reasons you're distant okay and brennan for whatever reason and even dr pia asked the question and he's like hey 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 now hold on now this is tough for emily okay and we don't we don't want to do this um and i want to know more about this i want to know more about this response here um, I do feel, I do feel protective energy here as Dr. Pia named. She asked if Brennan knew what, if he knew what it was, like what he was feeling in that moment and he, he didn't know. Um, he said, I just, that's just how I respond when I care about somebody. And so I'm like, okay. All right. Um, and at the same time, I, I want, yeah, there's more. It feels like there's more there in that energy there. Like, oh, oh you know, like, come on now. This is hard for, for Emily. I want to know, yeah, more about about that. Uh, I feel like he also is protecting himself. And I named this like at the last review. But he's he's either, he, whether he knows it or not, whether he is uh, aware or, you know, unconsciously doing this, he's also protecting himself in this moment, right? And it seems like, like, hey, we can't tell too much. Even like, information being shared like that's just like something we don't do we don't talk about that we don't do right and it's like um concealing information is a way he protects himself withholding information concealing information to protect yourself it's a very common form of protection it's a very common way to keep yourself safe if you don't know then you can't judge me if you don't know then you can't criticize me if you don't know then you can't hold me accountable like all of the things right and so, this is seems like, you know, kind of where he is. And so, Dr. Pia notices Emily's making a face, right? Because Brennan says, well, I just don't want to say something that's going to make it worse and not fix anything. Okay? And so, Emily makes this kind of frustrated face or this, like, kind of, like, looking like, okay, that doesn't make sense, right, to her. That's what I read. And... Dr. Pia wanted to right now make assumptions, which is which is the right thing to do and ask. And then Brennan steps in and he's like, "Well, okay, I can tell you what the re and it's like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> Again, there's like, I fear that there's a part of him that is concerned about and feels unsafe in the therapeutic environment. One, because he's never he's never been in it, and is using concealing information as a way to protect himself from being judged, from being viewed as someone who needs right? Who needs help or needs support in a therapeutic environment. Like, I got this. I know. I know why she's making that face, right? That's what I'm sensing is kind of happening here, um, which is, which again, is no shade to Brennan. Um, therapy is scary. <laughs> therapy is scary. You're in a space where you're talking about your, your world, your internal thoughts, your emotions. And if you haven't done it before, there's a lot of people we have fear judgment because other people, right? How other people have responded to your feelings, your thoughts, that's oftentimes how you believe that someone else will. And so then you don't. And so that's what I'm sensing is happening here. There are definitely some other factors that I feel like are also playing a role here too. And at the same time, this, yeah, this whole therapy being new and what are you going to do? What are your intentions? we shouldn't say too much we we shouldn't share too much this isn't right that's what i'm sensing is happening for brennan he doesn't feel safe in this environment and so even dr pia is like picking up on this and she's like okay all right well can i can i answer the question they have this back and forth and she's like well that's what i'm trying to do and that's what i'm trying to do and i've been there i've been there with dr pia uh in this moment and at the same time Ooh, for Dr. Pia, too, to take a pause to say, what are your concerns? What are your concerns about me checking in with Emily about her facial expressions? To see what he would say, right? To really get curious about why he's showing up in the way he is right now in session. Tell me there's a part of you that is concerned about or has some concerns about me asking Emily uh, about her facial expressions, right? So in this moment, she's like, you don't, she doesn't need your help. Well, I feel like, ooh, that, that may have had an impact on Brennan um, in that session, right? Um, 
and that's this is Dr. Pia's style. She's more direct. That's that's her style. It's no it's no harm, no foul. And at the same time, you know what can happen with a style like that though is that it can have an impact. He already doesn't feel safe in this environment. That's what I'm sensing. And then she doesn't need your help. It's like whoa, what? Hey. Oftentimes, even though the parts of us are trying to protect us and may um, have some impact that is that is not um, great there's the intent is still there and so it's like you're telling me i'm trying to protect my my wife and that's that's not right she doesn't need my help right I, so i i i sense potentially in that moment that brennan was well, there was some impact there and then there was and then to add salt on the wound right he's not right because he said oh that's your thinking face and no she said, well, it's thinking, but also frustration. Like, <laughs> Emily's trying to acknowledge Brennan, um, you know, said, but yeah, but frustration. And she was thinking, right? So, um, and so yeah. And Dr. Pia said, yeah, it's frustrating because she wants to know more. She wants to know. And so, um, it's like, even in this moment, Dr. Pia is using um, Emily's desire to get more information to help push Brennan to to give more information and yes and at the same time that can that can be really lead a person to feel ganged up on right and Brennan just experienced getting ganged up on by her friends right so I feel potentially what maybe would have been a better approach for someone who has like a it seems like a very highly protective system like Brennan is to is to really like get curious. Tell me what your concerns are um, about me asking Emily. What are your concerns about us even exploring this? Tell me. Tell me how you. Tell me how it feels for you to be here, right? Tell me how it feels for us to be talking about this right now. Tell me what you're feeling. What you're thinking for for her to really understand where Brennan's coming from. He's like, well, I feel kind of scared. Like I feel like you're gonna tell me I'm doing something wrong. Like I'm not showing up in a way I'm supposed to. Like I, you know, who knows what he's feeling, but for her to really get a clear picture of where Brennan is so then she can know how to move forward. And so then Dr. Pia asks again, so what do you feel is holding back, right? Holding back this attraction, what what do you feel is, and he said, he he just doesn't have the feeling. He doesn't feel attracted, so he's not going to act on it, right? He's not going to act on it. And so then Dr. Pia will tell me what you are feeling. If you're not attracted, tell me what you are feeling, right? And so she's asking, like, what are you feeling towards Emily, right? Are you are you annoyed with her? Are you disgusted with her? Are you angry with her? That's where the question Dr. Pia is asking. And it feels like Brennan, he didn't hear that. He was still in a space of, like, defending, like, if I don't have a feeling, I just don't feel it. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not, you know, I don't have these romantic feelings for her, right? And he's like, it's just not there. The feeling to want to be intimate with her. And he said he's never experienced this before. As Dr. Pia asked. She acknowledged, right, his emotional um, care for Emily, right? And and asked to it, what the emotion was that was connected to that. He didn't know, right? And... And so then she said, okay, tell me what your thoughts are about therapy. Because now Dr. P is understanding and getting the sense that Brennan isn't feeling safe. Because he's just, he's very uh, tight-lipped, right? Tight-lipped. But he's tight-lipped through this, this process, pretty much. Like I said, we don't know much. We don't know much about him uh, at all. Him or, him or Austin. <laughs> we don't know much about either of them, right? But, and so she's getting that sense, right? She's getting that sense that he doesn't feel safe. So she asks Emily, hey, how do you feel about therapy? She says she's open. She asks Brennan, how are you feel about therapy? And he said, well, I've never been in it before. I feel like it could be a great resource for other people, but, you know, that's it. And so she's like, hey, I feel like therapy could be really helpful for you, Brennan. And I feel like, yes, I agree with her recommendation, but I'm biased because... I believe therapy could be beneficial for everybody. Um, so that's my bias. I feel like potentially what maybe would have helped this recommendation go over better is Dr. P is saying, I think both of you seeking some individual therapy would be helpful because Emily, this is your first relationship and you're doing it in a very, very intense environment. 
and there's been some roadblocks, right? So I feel like you having some support in that area could be beneficial. And also, Brenda, I feel like exploring exploring your feelings could also, right, and learning what you're feeling and how to identify that, that could be really helpful too to help the marriage. So both of them, right? Because saying that Brennan just needs to go to therapy, what can be implied, even though uh, Dr. Pia did not say this, right? Dr. Pia did not say this, is that Brennan is the problem, right? Brennan is the problem. And we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Um, what's happening because there's there's even Emily is like getting the sense that Brennan doesn't want to share any information she's even being restricted in how she he discloses right in therapy even with the group right and so I really sense that that maybe could have helped right just recommend that they both because it wouldn't it would not hurt Emily does need some support I feel like that's something that everybody really that goes through married at first sight needs. They need to have the joint couples therapy and they also need to have their individual peeps that they see. I feel like that's just should be a thing to really do this in a safe way. But, you know, that's not where we are. And it could really have helped. But Brennan did not take that well. And they are really talking about this after, right? <laughs> after the session and Emily said that she feels like things are moving forward and in the right direction and she said next week maybe we can get into some other stuff and I wanted to say Emily were you in the same session that we were just watching were you there um sometimes I wonder about this part of her that is like really optimistic and maybe it's what she's leaning into to really just to keep pushing through this like um like to push through this experience. Like I want to stay in and I want to stick with it. This is my first relationship. I don't want to quit. I just want to keep, I keep, I want to keep being positive and, and like, Hey, that session went well. We did get a little bit more information. So maybe he'll take that recommendation. Maybe she's thinking he's taking that recommendation and he's going to go to a therapist. For me, what I saw, I saw, no, <laughs> I saw Brennan saying, no way, Jose. And that's what he said. He said, yeah, no, maybe we're not on the same page because he says she kept harping on my emotions and he's like, I'm trying to understand where that's coming from, right? Again, he's got this part. What's your agenda? What's your agenda? What's your intention? And it feels like potentially uh, he's perceiving or part of him is perceiving that her asking questions about his feelings and his emotions was coming from a place that had an agenda. And so because of that, that made him be even more restrictive with his information, <laughs> Uh, in the session. And so Brennan is saying I, he was open and honest through the whole thing and he can't, right? He can't talk about something he's not feeling, right? If he can't, and he can't help how he feels. And Emily said that she feels that he doesn't know how he feels. And Brennan shares, he, hey, I was asked to disclose, disclose feelings towards her. And he said, I don't have any yet. I don't have any yet. So that's why I'm like, okay, he's thinking, you want me to make feelings that aren't there be there. And I'm not, I can't do that. I can't do that. And further, he doesn't understand why he needs to go to therapy to understand why these romantic feelings aren't there. And then Emily shares, well, I feel like you're sharing your feelings as much as you can share them. And then she said, well, I think that you have more feelings. And he said, for you? She said, no, just in general. And then he kind of, his demeanor switched. It flipped. He said, now do you see why I'm frustrated? What are you talking about? What am I not explaining to you about how I feel? And so then Emily gets confused. She starts getting a little, right, snippy um, with him as well. Like So they're like in this, he's in a state where it feels like just the defense mode has reached like the highest level right and another part of him has come into play i want to know more about it i do i want to know more about this here that we're seeing um and i'm concerned about about this part of brennan um, because it feels it feels like 
um, like potentially like a, like a part of him that may have some rage, may have some aggression. And so, yeah, I'm concerned. I'm concerned about um, the withholding information, you know, him feeling, him really feeling forced in an bind. And I feel like because his defenses were up, he wasn't really able to hear what was happening in the session or even what Emily's saying in this moment. And he's frustrated because he feels like everybody's trying to make him have feelings for Emily. And that's not at all what th that's trying to happen. Or people are trying to make him say why he doesn't have them. So then he later discloses. He later discloses at the after party that he has some concerns about the fact that she's a party girl. The fact that she had one night stands. The fact that, right? And so we saw this. We saw this when Emily was sharing it. I, I for sure did. His, his, his feelings... His facial expression shifted. Even in the money conversation, it shifted. I spend my money reckless, right? I, I spend it however I want to spend it. And he's like a person who's very meticulous. And so I feel like he's feeling like this is a mismatch. Like this is not um, a match that's working for him. And I really would love for him to say that. I wonder why he doesn't feel safe enough to say it. Or hasn't felt safe enough to say it. Um, if it is just because, again, he doesn't feel safe in a therapeutic environment. He feels like people are going to see him as a bad guy. Or people are going to see him as judging Emily. What You know, whatever is here. There's a reason why he's withholding this information. And there's also, I feel like there was so much miscommunication happening in this session. Do I feel like this behavior is okay? Absolutely not. I feel like it's very harmful. Um, it's been harmful and then I'm also seeing where Emily's also getting frustrated and the part of her that is um sarcastic and um you know like has has more of a a, a aggressive tone to it as well as coming in and that is going to you know to further escalate the situation between the two of them so I have concerns I have concerns about Emily and Brennan moving forward I feel like um, Brendan has, has stood 10 toes down that he is not going to therapy. It's never going to happen. Uh, and that's usually what happens when you push somebody to do something that they say they're not going to do. <laughs> um, nobody likes that. Nobody, nobody likes to be told to do something that they already said they weren't going to do. And, and the best place to meet anybody with them saying that they're not going to do something is with curiosity. And not coming from a place of like, why don't you want to go to therapy? Uh, like, really? Tell me, tell me more about that. Like, what, what are your concerns about therapy? What do you feel Dr. Pia was saying when she recommended you to go to therapy? Like, tell me, tell me more. Because that's, that's a different, it's a different, it's like, oh, you're trying to hear me to understand. And that's what he felt even with her friends. Like he wasn't, they weren't coming to understand him. They were coming to attack him. And it feels like he's still feeling that way with Dr. Pia and with Emily in this moment, right? Um, and and so I'm concerned about the methods of protection, the tools he has, that they feel like potentially they've taken in some information or he's also seen people behave in a certain way that it's not okay. And that's what I'm sensing maybe happening in this relationship with Emily and Brennan. And I'm concerned. Uh, I'm concerned. So hopefully they, they get some supports around this. I'm seeing that, you know, Dr. Pia has a part of her that also likes to hold people accountable um, and likes to, again, be direct, right? That is her way. Um, and sometimes that doesn't fit well with everybody, right? And it seems like that isn't a good fit in this in this with this couple um potentially right emily's liking it because she feels like her voice like both of them are using dr p and emily were both using each other as like an amen <laughs> corner and trying to again hey don't you see how you need to say just say the things and um brennan was not having it he just wasn't having it because he's already said i'm not gonna say it i'm not gonna say it but at the after party, he said it. So I'm glad that he said it at the after party. Uh, maybe it's because he felt safer to say it because Emily wasn't there. And um, Emily needs to know. Emily needs to know this. 
yes, it's going to potentially cause her to be upset and, and hurt. And also, she needs to know where he is. She does. So, we'll see how long this holdout on the information lasts. If Emily will ever learn um, why Brennan is, is shut down and checked out in their marriage. We shall see. Last, we have Cameron and Claire. All right, here we go. So, after their housewarming, they wake up and Claire is saying she was hot during the middle of the night. And she said she was hot multiple times. And she expected Cameron to, like, adjust the temperature. He said, well, you never asked me to. So, they had this little moment. I feel like this is, this is, like, the bulk of their, um, their issues. Communication. Who Um, hearing each other. Claire definitely... Um, it's interesting her, the methods of communication she uses and Cameron is a person that just say it, tell me, tell me, tell me, can you tell me, can you just tell me <laughs> directly? Um, and sometimes Claire does it, does do that. Um, and, and then sometimes she does not. Right. Um, so Cameron just discusses with Claire, like more information about his, his father and like why things came up the way they did, right? He said this has been this way for for a long time. He's grieved, he's grieved this. He's gone through the steps. He's done the things, and it is what it is. And he also was protecting his dad because, you know, his health is is waning. Saying information like, "Hey, I'm getting married to a stranger," could potentially add more stress to his father, and he doesn't want to compromise his health. He did say at the after party that he did share this information with Claire, but maybe there was like a misunderstanding or a miscommunication. He also shared that after his parents got a divorce when he was 13 years old, his father's lung collapsed. And it's like, oh, so it's like, I know what I do know. I don't know if they're related. There could be pre, you know, issues he could have some issues with, um, you know, with his lungs, that history, right? And I also know that grief can really have an impact on, on your lungs, like tightness in your chest, restriction, and things like that. So it made me just like, mm. you know, grieving a marriage is still a grief. Like uh, the end of a marriage, that is that is grief as well. So just made me wonder a little bit more on that too. And it also kind of gives me a... Um, a real more understanding of why Cameron is showing up in the way that he is in this in this episode. The information that was disclosed in the after party um, also is just kind of like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this information. Uh, it doesn't align with what I'm seeing, right? Cameron said that he is attracted to Claire. Um, and after after party, Lauren shared that that's not what she heard from Claire at all uh, around how Cameron is describing um, his attraction to Claire, I'll leave the words he said to the after party. You can go watch those words if you want. <laughs> and so I don't know. I don't know what's happening, where the disconnect is. I know for sure we heard, um, Claire say, I think it was the first or second episode, you know, right after the wedding that he wanted someone taller and slender. He did say that he said, and then at the after party, he said he got exactly what he was asking for, that she's slender and athletic, and that's exactly what he asked for. So, I don't know. I don't know if, that if Cameron is trying to, um, you know, protect himself in this moment by switching up. Maybe he's become more attracted to her in the moment. Who knows? But this is, right, it seems like in this moment, things have happened for both of them. In the area of attraction, they both said, hey, we're not what each other would have really cling to if we weren't in this process. And that was a ding. I feel like that was a, a when I say a ding, like an ouch for both of them. And so they've been protecting themselves from rejection throughout this whole process. And it's still very much here. Right. Uh, Cameron said also on, on, at the after party that Claire has asked him not to touch her in any way on camera, like to not do that. Um, and so that just, I don't know, that makes me concerned if that is the case, 
right? There's been some inconsistent truths on camera's end, so I don't know. Um, but if that is the case, I'm, I'm concerned. Yeah, I'm concerned about, about where they really are, right? And if what we're seeing is being curated or if it is. It seems like they're having and breaking down this conversation. Claire talked about how shocked she was, but now, um, now hearing from Cameron the truth about his dad, like she has a, a better understanding and, and just wants Cameron to feel comfortable to not hide things from her. Okay. So they're eating together and Cameron shares in his confessional that, you know, the cascading, um, uh, feelings of annoyance that, um, Claire states about him makes them feel stuck in in that relationship in this relationship and he wants to feel wanted he wants to feel like claire wants to be connected to him wants to be in this with him and he said also that her body language and her actions also makes him feel that she doesn't want him okay so he said that he's feeling stuck and claire said she does also feel like they've hit a wall because there's zero romance I feel like Claire in this moment is is feeling like she's speaking for both of them. Like there's zero romance. And um I feel like from what I read on camera, I'm only going to name what I can read on camera cuz off camera and me guessing, I cannot, right? But on camera it feels like Cameron does have feelings for her. It it I I I see that. Um and I'm wondering what is happening that's making Claire say there's zero romance, right? And so he said, well, okay. Are there any things that he's doing that are actually romantic turn-ons? And so Claire said, man, when you check in on me, if you're seeing that I'm stressed and you're making sure I'm okay, like the fact that you're being, a, you know, um, attentive and attuned to me, that's like an attractive trait. He's like, okay, great. And he said, well, okay, are there any things that I'm doing that are like turn-offs? And she said, no, there's a part of me that feels like this is an untruth. There's a part of me that feels like Claire may be trying to protect Cameron's feelings in this moment. I don't know. I feel like there are things that he's doing that are, are turning her off and she's not naming them there. There's a part of me that's saying that has to be a truth. That has to be, I don't, you know, I, I just, I just sense that, you know, um, especially how they are. Uh, how they relate to each other and sometimes get in these like kind of like tense like little moments like there's something that's happening and maybe she doesn't know and that's why she's saying no like she doesn't understand why it's happening and maybe she can even use that language like yeah there are times where we're interacting and it can cause like just a little part of me to kind of rise up and I don't know what that's about but you know when that happens I, you know I don't feel attracted to you in those moments right like that or the annoyances that he's talking about the cascading feelings of annoyances like that's there's something there that she's like i don't like cameron who he is or if she's doing this because she feels rejected by him because of the comment he made initially about the slender and tall right we need to know what's happening and it feels like there there's even restriction in their communication as well so i'm wondering about the curation of the communication that's happening on camera if that's also a part of this as well so she says no she says she just doesn't feel um comfortable um you know engaging in this way you know and romantically because you know there there aren't any like other feelings it doesn't feel natural for her to engage in that right and she's like you know same for you right it doesn't feel natural for you to kiss me and he said no i actually i actually would 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 do that and so then she says she feels guilty because there's a part of her that doesn't feel comfortable and she feels like she's not doing enough and that and so he said hey there's no need to apologize if you don't feel comfortable that's not a wrong that's not a bad thing that's not um you know that's not your fault if you don't feel comfortable you don't feel comfortable and he said that even with their limited romantic connection that he's starting to feel attached to her and like he said i'm here i'm happy i'm trying to really make this work and i also don't want my efforts to be in vain like if you don't see a future in this then we just need to call it so he's like is there is there a 0.1 chance in this and she's like no there's more than that and so he said okay all right she did a little hesitation there but she said there's more than that and so at the potluck cameron kind of jumps in um 
was between Orion and Lauren. I feel like he was, there was a part of him that was trying to rescue them, like himself and even them in this moment of like, hey, hey, hey. Um, just so you know, Ryan, like, we're not the only ones, you're not the only ones that are alone in this. Like, we differ in religion, we're having chemistry and romance issues, and Claire said, yeah, I respect, I respect, and I care for him uh, so much, and it makes her sad. It makes her sad that they're not able to move forward, and Cameron said that she's the best person. She's the best person he's ever met. He's head over heels, and Claire said, oh, don't make me cry. And I don't know. There's something there. And I'm wondering, like, what, what, what's there? I want to know more about that. There's a part of me that feels like she's saying that to, um, because I like out of guilt. Like, I don't feel the way you feel about me. And that, and like, oh, but, and that's sweet, right? And whenever he says something sweet, it's like, yeah, thanks, Cameron. You know, it's almost like she doesn't feel like she can say the same about him, right? That's what it seems like is is there, right? But he said they do have a fiery uh, connection, um, and they both attested to that. But they they get along and they challenge each other. And and Claire said that she feels like that's why the experts really match them because of that, because they do challenge each other, um, and. And Claire was like, whew, okay, I'm sweating. That was a lot. Like, to talk about their relationship in front of the couples, that was a lot. And it is a lot um, to do that. It's a very vulnerable space um, for them. And so, um, after the potluck, they're debriefing, right? And Claire is saying she didn't realize that the other couples, um, you know, where they were. And she thought her and Kim were in such a bad spot. Um, and now she's saying, like, oh okay, everybody's struggling. Like, everybody is having a hard time. It's not just us. Yeah, and Cameron said, yeah, at least we're talking about it. And so he, they're, like, comparing themselves to the couples. Like, Beck and Austin, they're not talking about it. And, and Emily and Brenna, they don't seem to be on the same page, so they're not communicating. And Claire said, and we're honest. You know, we are both really honest people. So as long as we continue to do that, that's going to be really beneficial uh, for the outlook of our relationship. And a part of me was like, well, after, at the after party, someone's not honest. Someone's not being honest. Um, but Cameron said, well, hey, I was inspired. And I know this is going to sound bad, but I'm going to say it. That I need to think about myself. I need to think about myself. And I saw Orion choosing himself. And I'm going to choose me. And I want to protect me and see if are we just at an impasse right are we just not going to be able to move forward are we not going to be able to do this are we are we at a roadblock is there adjustment that we need to make right it, what, what can we do and claire said i don't know i don't know and so it ends there and they have their session with dr pia and dr pia is lost because they have taken their rings off <laughs> And Cameron explained that they have both looked at the long-term viability of their relationship and it's not looking good. It's not there. And Dr. PM kind of asked them to pause and see, give it some more thoughts, see if they can make it through the process. They said they've done so much. They've, they've ex extended and expended all resources that they have towards you know them. And so Dr. PM said, I'm hearing you. And at the same time, I'm also saying, what have you tried? And um, Claire's like, yeah, that's a that's a valid question. Yeah, that's a real valid question. And so Cameron's like, well, are there some things we can try? And so Dr. Pia recommends that they, one, start to kind of lean into things that are going to help them to ground themselves because this situation is anxiety provoking. It is distressing to the system. And it is. Uh, nervous system is up and it is heightened. And it's like, what? Threat? Huh? Threat. And so our protection is going to be up in situations like that. And so to help to ground them, to help them feel more like themselves so they can respond from a place that's more grounded instead of from a fear, fear based space. Right. And then she also said to say, hey, talking about the future and things on the future and focusing on the future constantly can also be anxiety provoking. And so maybe just spending time connecting with each other, being in the present with each other and and not thinking about like kids romance and and religion you know things that aren't um fun topics right but ways for them to connect um and cameron said well you know 
I hear you. And I feel like that's wonderful advice. And I'm also going to need some time to sit with it, which is valid. I feel that Cameron has a part of him that's really concerned about him getting hurt. He cares for Claire, I think, even more than he he knows and realizes. And Claire is not reciprocating that. And he's like, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to do this. And so he's trying to pull, pull away, right? And so... He came in after the session and saying, hey, do you want me to move out? Tell me what you want me to do. And she's like, it's hard because like, you know, I don't I don't know. He's like, well, do you want me to leave? And he's wanting what he's saying is, do you like me or no? <laughs> like, tell me, tell me where you are. Like, tell me, tell me, are you going to tell me? And Claire is being it feels like she's also feeling pressured to make a decision. Right. She's not answering the question. She's just saying, hey, Dr. Pia told us not to do this. Dr. Pia told us not to focus on the future. Doctor, you know, to make a decision right now. And I don't know. I don't know. I, I would miss you. Like, I would miss you if you weren't here. And I don't know if it's because you just have been here for the last couple of weeks and then you're not here. And, oh, if, if we made this attachment, but is it the right attachment? And I'm like, okay. I really want Claire to really name what's happening, right? There's a part of me that wants that to happen. And at the same time, too, we're seeing that Claire is in a space where it seems like she is really struggling to be vulnerable in this moment, whether it's like, yeah, I do like you. And at the same time, you made some comments about my appearance that really hurt me. And so, like, I'm struggling to lean into this and be open and be ha and develop these romantic feelings for you. Like, right? I don't know if that's what she's feeling, but... That's an example of us of something she could say. Or even like, I don't know, I'm torn. I see a lot in that we have and potential that we have. And I also wonder if that's enough. Because that's what she said, said to her friend. Like she said to her friend last episode. But she doesn't say much, right? It's more of a, a thinking. And she says what really like coming from an intellectual place and not from a heart space. And so Cameron's like, okay. All right, how about this? How about I just move to the other bedroom and we'll go from there and see how that goes. And and Claire's like, okay, you know? And so Claire's like, I just don't want you to resent me, like to resent me for this. And then he like kind of looks over and um, and she's like, oh no. He said, well, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't resent you yet, right? Not yet. I'm wondering about Claire, I'm wondering about what Claire's really feeling and thinking because she's not really sharing that, right? Even though she's she's directing her communication, right? And at the same time, she doesn't say how she feels. It's just like what she's thinking um, and how she's processing the information. But she's not saying what she's feeling. Um, there's, there's definitely a disconnect, right, from her head and her heart. Uh, and... Cameron, I'm also curious about this this New Zealand story, right? Of Cameron, his upbringing, um, he, the way he describes himself, the being kicked out of the church at 10, his parents getting a divorce at 13, this divorce having a huge impact on his dad's health. Like he's seen heartbreak in the end of relationships and what it can do to someone, right? I'm just, this is... This is what I'm going off of the information that I have, right? And then he has this tendency, right? He said to have a relationship for one year, off for one year, a relationship for one year, off for one for a year. Like, is this a way that he protects himself from not getting too close to people, not getting right um, to the place where it can cause harm to him, like protecting himself from getting hurt? I'm wondering, I'm wondering, right? And so. I think it's something for both of them to get curious about why there's this disconnect right between Claire's heart and her head because she's speaking definitely from a head space and for Cameron to yeah to explore what he's definitely concerned definitely concerned about getting hurt again but also exploring like the origin of this like what 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 are the risks what is what what are the risks here and can he trust himself to take that risk all right don't want to put himself in harm's way for sure i mean if if what is being said is true if claire is saying hey don't touch me you know off camera and if cameron has said these things of, uh, that lauren said that 
Cameron said about Claire, then, then, you know, it makes sense why, it makes sense why they're just not, they're not moving forward. They're not moving forward. And especially if the physical intimacy piece, that's a thing that Cameron is like harping on constantly. And if that's a thing that Claire said, that's just a no go, right? Then it's like Cameron said, well, what, what's, what's, what's going on, right? What's going on here? Um, and so I'm, I'm a bit discouraged. I have to say watching this episode, I'm a bit discouraged because it's like, man, these couples are really going through it and it doesn't look like we're going to have like, usually we, there's one couple that we can hold on to for hope to make it through, um, past decision day and like be successful. But I don't see that there's. Uh, much hope for that to happen i'm like austin and becca with a question mark um but they're still so surface level that that i don't know i don't know if we can bet on them so we shall see you tell me your thoughts tell me your thoughts about this episode Uh, i brought up a whole lot for sure and if you are still if you are still watching with us be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and as always be cool be calm be centered Peace.